today we're talking about how I got into downhill skateboarding and it's actually, I don't know, I think it's, it's an interesting story. The way it sort of snuck up on me, like honestly, like when I first started longboarding, when I first bought a cruiser, I thought downhill was lame. I thought that shit was like for the birds, bro. Honestly, like people putting their hands on the ground, doing slides. I, <sighs> bro, I, I don't know what to tell you guys. It just didn't look that good. I genuinely had no intention of getting into downhill. Like genuinely. Like I, yeah. So it's really interesting how through a turn of events, through many things that I ended up here and we're going to talk about it. <laughs> So let's start from the very beginning. I first sort of got interested in skating after playing, I think like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 or Pro Skater 4. And it was just like a, a lot of fun, man. The, the soundtracks also on that game uh, sort of cemented my love for punk rock and like metal and that sort of stuff, but it was so good. And then my brother bought like a small skateboard, like one of those cheap Walmart cruisers when we had like a family trip to Dubai. And of course, naturally I wanted a skateboard. So I got one, but shortly thereafter, it broke and uh, that was that, you know, I didn't skate for many a year after that. But then come 2014, your boy got accepted into Leeds University. I was super hyped. I was going to go to another country to study. And yeah, man, good stuff. Yeah, my first year there was like pretty standard, bro. I did. I didn't do much skating at all. Uh, I pretty much just hanged out with people, sort of discovered myself, discovered the sort of things that I was like interested in. And it was honestly a good time, man. I had like so much fun. <laughs> oh my God. Ah, oh, this brings me back memories, man. Oh, this is insane. Hey, look at me. Wee. Wow, yeah. And the other thing is in my first year, I lived in Ellerslie Hall, which was pretty much on campus. Like my whole life was basically this sort of area. Like I'd go and eat here. My uni classes were like about here or like here or like farthest away was the, Ro was the Roger Stevens building, which was about here. So I could pretty much get anywhere walking. You know, I did not need a transportation option to sort of get me around or whatever, you know. But living in halls was pretty expensive and the only affordable option was living off campus. And what living off campus meant was living farther away from this general area. And so as I sat there and thought, okay, hmm, taking the bus is expensive, hmm, walking sucks, what can I do? And I was like, aha, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna buy a cruiser to get around. And what is it that every person interested in longboarding does? I went to amazon.co.uk. I looked up longboards and I found the cheapest one and I bought it. Can't really find it on Amazon right now, but this is the exact same board that I bought. It was about 29 pounds, which was fairly affordable. It was actually a surf skate, but I didn't know that. I, I didn't know anything, bro. It was just cheap. It was a longboard. The reviews looked good, I think. I don't know, man. So I bought it and yeah, man, I never really looked back. And that pretty much became my transportation option. Like I lived about here and I'd commute to uni. I'd go to my friend's houses where there was like about down here. Pretty much went everywhere with that board. And the best part, the best part was that my house was on top of a hill so all these roads this way and this way and this way were downhill so i literally just had to step on the board and i'd start rolling down the hill and yeah to the supermarket there was this really nice like 24 hour supermarket called sainsbury's and i take like this route down like this and it was pretty much all downhill it was super fun like i just come out like at 2 a.m and skate down there but yeah that was pretty much my my transportation option and it was honestly so fun and so chill yeah it was good times you know naturally as you start skating you know you start feeling like you know you're a hot shot or whatever or i don't know man you start looking up tricks and stuff and there's one longboarding video that really stood out to me this one this video i watched this video so many times bro so many times it's just these guys sponsored by original doing a couple tricks on these longboards and these things were so expensive they were like 300 pounds like way too much money for me to spend on a longboard was so damn expensive there was even like this one trick or this one board uh let me see if i can find it uh yeah this tiny board uh you don't even see it very well then yeah that one the one he's doing tricks on 
oh yes that one and i was like wow that longboard looks so cool i'm gonna save up and i'm gonna buy it one day and i'm gonna be able to do all these tricks that they're doing and yeah it never happened but it, it gave me so much stoke so one day i was on amazon looking at boards and i saw one for sale so cheap that i was like i have to buy this even if it's trash it was this vault squealer and it was honestly the ugliest board that i have ever seen it had like probably a super trash design man let's see what this kid is saying about it but this is what it looked like i hated the deck the trucks were and all that but i i think i even watched this review and i saw what this kid was doing and i was like okay this board is only 20 pounds complete by the way 20 pounds complete with trucks with wheels let me just mess around maybe I'll, I'll really like it you know this is what it looked like man this board was ugly the shape was ugly but it was 20 pounds bro 20 pounds is 20 pounds man and your boy bought the board bro 20 pounds and one day i was out riding in the rain and i turned hillside a little bit too hard and then you know what happens the back wheels just sort of slipped and i was like huh huh so so i went back i went back to the place it happened and i tried it again and the back wheel sort of slipped out again and i was like mm. Mm. so it's that easy huh mm. so it's that easy huh so what did i do i spent the next hour learning stand-up slides in the rain dude by the end of that i could actually do them and i could actually slide like two feet i was like wow that's actually so easy and yeah, man, that's how I learned how to uh, do stand-up slides, you know. And so what did I do? The next day, I switched over the wheels onto my two bare feet longboard, you know, the orange one. And I went and I skated some hills. I was really surprised by how awesome using sliding or stand-up slides as a break was. Like, I didn't have to destroy my shoes anymore, like foot breaking. I could just do stand-up slides. I mean, granted, I was doing stand-up slides like literally every five feet to manage my speed. But I was doing them. And from that, my love of going down hills just sort of snowballed, you know. The better I got at stand-up sliding, it meant I could go slightly faster. By the way, I did have a helmet. I was sensible enough to have a helmet, but I was doing it without slide gloves, which in its own way is another form of stupidity. I was able to do this pretty consistently. And towards the end of my 2016, uh, well, my second year at uni, I decided, you know what, I'm going to buy a bigger board. It's going to be better for slides, but that can still sort of do tricks on it. So I ended up buying a Lush Chopper. I also bought some Paris V2, 50 degrees. And I also bought some Cult Converters. And dude, this is literally my setup. I even posted on like the Lush Longboard website had like a fan page thing. And I was like, I use the Lush Chopper for free riding downhill and a few flag round tricks and uh, then I also bought the free bird for my friend well he bought it I just sort of put it in my uh, in my picture but yeah 2015 summer I came back to Kenya and uh, I had also bought some slide gloves because I was like okay if I'm gonna be going super fast I should also know how to do a pendulum just in case started learning a couple things started learning how to pre-drift Oddly enough, like I literally learned how to do a toe side pendulum and a toe side pre drift the same day that I got my slide gloves. I mean, just clap for me. Who else is as talented as I am and as amazing? Toe side pre drift one day. But the hillside pre drift and the hillside pendulum took me literal months to learn because I had the shittest lower body flexibility. Man, that shit was terrible, bro. I could, I, even to this day, I still struggle to do a perfect squat. But yeah it took me months to learn but yeah i came back from the uk started learning how to do all these things bro it was so fun and this is literally what i did all of summer man just downhill skating sliding and then i went back for my second year or third year of uni i think third year yeah third year of uni and i was like hmm you know what downhill actually isn't actually that dumb but it's actually sort of fun to bomb hills and do slides like bro this is me man look at this this is me dude i could barely talk but i was feeling the speed and it all sort of snowballed from there i then met up with like the leads downhill group started skating with them taking excursions out to nearby like spots got a better board for downhill it just sort of like you know ambushed me dude i didn't think that 
skating down hills and doing slides would be this fun but it was and honestly this hobby absorbed me man like any chance i got i'd be out skating bro like i'd be bullying my friends bullying my ex-girlfriend being like hey come film me doing this come do this with me come skate with me and i literally forced everyone around me into skating there were times that we had like these group sessions and i got so many of my friends involved and yeah it was actually a very good time and i'm just thankful that i found uh, something to be passionate and excited about and that i can do every day that's pretty much <laughs> how I got into downhill, man. And it's just crazy to me, you know, how something I thought that looked lame and a little bit cookie ended up being such a big part of my life, you know. It just goes to show you, you know, maybe maybe you don't know shit, man. Maybe, maybe you should keep an open mind, try new things, learn stuff, you know, be ready to change your mind because you never know how stuff might go. And yeah, I hope this video has been enjoyable. This week's video was supposed to be on how to do a sit down slide, but I was not happy with like the stuff that I put together. It wasn't the best quality, it wasn't my best effort. So uh, we're doing this instead, but that should be the next video or the video after that, depending on a few things. And yeah, hope this has been enjoyable. Leave a comment or whatever. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. As always, if you do want to support me, you can support me on Patreon. Link in the description. Big thanks to my existing patrons. I can do this stuff because of you guys. And yeah, catch you guys in the next video.